Oh, okay. So we need to identify want and, oh yeah, part of this word right here. What are we missing here? Uh, will. 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 Okay. So this is a contraction. We can tell because of the apostrophe. So does anybody have an idea about will? Oh, oh it's a verb because I will. It would be like a future. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Come on up and mark it. Oh. Yep. Auxiliary verb and it is giving us present our future tense. So what about this one? Oh, I'm sorry. What about want? What about want? Who's got some ideas? <coughs> Can I speak? Um, for save, I think it's yeah. I think it's an action verb because you're doing something. Okay. You think it's an action verb? It is marked as a verb. Okay. So that's great. Yep. We're definitely that's definitely right on. But we still have one word here that's not identified. Before we start questioning any of the others, what about want? Very. Would that be an action verb? Okay. What well, makes you say that it could be? Because if you want something, that's an action. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's mark it as one, and then we'll see as we go along. But we have something to start with. Anything up here that you're questioning, that you're like, I don't know about that. I, and it doesn't mean you have to, like, know what you think it is, but you could say, I'm not, just not sure that's a correct um, labeling. Yeah? We need some determiners. Wow, there's a great thought. How, what makes you say that we need determiners? What do we have that would need a determiner? The nouns. We have some nouns. Okay. And typically when we have nouns, we have determiners. Not always, but typically we do. Patron? Um, I don't think some is an adjective. Okay. What do you think it is? I think it's, um, I'm not quite sure yet. It's right in front of a noun. Could that be what? Frankie was talking about? Yeah. Go to that page of determiners where we had oh, noun with a determiner right in front of it. We had the examples. And see if it's there. I don't know for sure if it's there, but let's see if it's there. Sam, did you find it? Oh, okay. All right. So that went really well. I think we need some determiners in the very first word so my question ended up being a determiner. Okay. It's a quantifier because it's more than a little bit, right? It's it's telling us a little bit more than a thing. It's got some. All right, something else you see? Else? Ah, what kind of determiner? Possessive. It's a possessive determiner. Very good. All right. Anything else? There's one more thing up here. One more part of speech for sure that I'm wondering about. Well, I, I'm just saying this about um, oh. the, the um, with my, wait, no, not my, uh, and then mine. Okay. Sabia? Um, I don't know for sure, but if... Yeah. Okay, so you're both questioning if, that it would be a preposition. Is it on the preposition page? I don't think, no. Is it where the page where we have the preposition song? Oh, you found it. I think it's a subordinating conjunction. Is that what you found in your brochure? Yeah. Yeah. Page 32. Okay, subordinating in conjunction, and it's beginning our sentence. So it's going to be complex. Okay, it's going to be a complex sentence. And if that's the case, and this is always part of which clause? 
the dependent or the independent? Dependent. 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 That means we're probably looking at a complex dependent, comma, independent. So the first clause should end at the <coughs> punctuation. Comma. <coughs> yeah. Yep. Somebody read the first clause. Let's see if this works. Anna? If I want to go to Italy with my son. Okay. Does that sound like a complete thought or does it sound like it still needs something? Yeah, like if, 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 I want to need something. Still needs something. So that is our dependent clause. What about the rest of it? I'll have to save some money. Does that sound like a complete thought? Yeah. yeah. I'll have to save some money. Okay. Yep. So we have our dependent and then we have our independent. All right. Cool. Let's go over these. Oh, you want some something else? What's the second two in the sentence? Like what else? This one? Yeah. Uh, marked as a preposition. Okay. Yeah. So we have a conjunction here, subordinating conjunction. We have a pronoun. What kind of pronoun is this? Uh, is it subject. Subject pronoun. Helpful to know. Subject, subject pronoun. <laughs> okay. They keep that in mind when we get to our next row here. Um, then we have a verb. Does that make sense that a verb might follow a subject pronoun? Yeah, yeah. that's a subject. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. okay. And then we have a preposition and an action verb. That's interesting. Is this going to be a prepositional phrase? What does Wait. a prepositional phrase usually begin with? Um, preposition. Preposition. What does it usually end with? A pronoun. Um, or a pronoun. But this one is ending with mm -hmm. a verb. Tick, 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 tick. Maybe it's mm -hmm. the other one, the two. The I want two to Italy. go to Italy. This is a preposition used with an action verb. Go through your books. Is be after all your parts of speech. Oh, the preposition to. Yeah, it has to. Yeah, the positive and the infinitive. 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 <laughs> okay. So we're looking at what is typically thought of as a preposition <coughs> paired up with a verb, and that gives us our infinitive, right? When we recognize it right here, we go, oh, with a verb, that's an infinitive. We can start marking it right here, part of speech, as an infinitive, okay? It's okay we do this until we start recognizing, because you are very good at pointing out that it, a prepositional phrase, this can't be one, because it doesn't end with a noun or a pronoun, it ends with a verb. How about this one? Preposition, where does it end? Italy. Italy. What is this, an infinitive or a prepositional phrase? Prepositional. Uh, prepositional phrase because it ends with a noun. Okay? Preposition. Oh, is this one an infinitive or a prepositional phrase? Prepositional. Because it ends with a noun. A noun. Okay? Nicely done through that. Now we've got our second clause. We have a subject pronoun again. We have a verb that's showing as future tense along with our action verb have. So we'll have, infinitive. we have a preposition followed by an infinitive phrase. We have another infinitive, don't we? Is that a term like that? Uh-huh, because it's a <laughs> the to with the verb. And then we have a determiner, and we have a noun. Okay, cool. Let's go down to find subject predicates. How many sets of subject predicate are we looking for? Two sets because we've kind of already figured out we're going to have a complex sentence. Two in two clauses is going to require subject predicate, subject predicate. Natasha, yep, all three of you. And fourth one, Samantha. I as the subject of this clause. So I go. Is that right? I go? Yeah. yeah. I go? Go one. Yeah. Nowhere. I go? Is that what this phrase is all about? I go? Yeah. 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 You, you, you want. want what? You want. I think so. It's, it's what you want. Oh, yeah. okay. Want so maybe to what? So go. I want what? To go to, to, go to, go to, go to, go to You want to go to Oh, okay. Um, all right. 
So this is not our predicate. Even though we normally look for a verb to be our predicate, our predicate is not. And what about to go to Italy with my son? That becomes what? I will have to say direct object. It becomes our direct object. I want what? To go to Italy. To go to Italy with Italy. my son. Italy. I want all of that as my direct Italy. object. Because it answers the question, I want what? To go to Italy with my son. That would really be fun, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay, let's look at the second phrase. What do you notice about this? This okay? Um, Owen? I'll save. I'll save one. I think. Yeah, I think I'll. I'll save one. Some money. I'll save. I'll save. I'll have to. I'll save. I'll save what money? I'll save what? I'll have to save some money. I'll save what? I'll save some money. Go. Go. Could. Could I have been the predicate? What do you guys think about that? Petra says, "Could have be the predicate." Oh yeah, I'll, I'll have. have. Yeah, it's like it's like I'll have to, so to save some money. So I think maybe it's I will. That. Okay. Yeah. Save is involved in what? What did we say save. that save was part of? Oh, um, the phrase. Not a prepositional, not a prepositional phrase. Infinitive. 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 If it's an infinitive, it's not a verb. It's not a predicate of our sentence. It's, it's something else in our sentence. So this is nicely spotted, our predicate. And let's ask that question. I'll have what? To save, to save. So to save, save some money. To save some money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boom. Does that make sense? We can't get caught up in marking an infinitive. Once you recognize it's an infinitive, that's a phrase. That's not your predicate. That's a phrase in the sentence, okay? This is a phrase in the sentence. That's not going to be our predicate. There's our clear predicate. All right. Now, phrases. Oh, my goodness, phrases. How many phrases we have? Come on, have we got more than one? Thirteen. Wow. Alex, Oliver, we got another, we've got more phrases. We have more, James. Which was this morning? Okay. Okay. Where's so this one is marked as a prepositional phrase. A prepositional. What's the structure of a prepositional phrase? Uh, it begins with preposition and it ends with a noun. Ends with a noun. That's an infinitive. Oh, so it's not a preposition. Okay. To Italy is a preposition. Oh. You got another preposition here ending with a noun. So that one goes there right in here. So put that one in there. Because it's a two paired with a verb. with my son and to save we could make this phrase we could include this all in the phrase and then we have to say phrase right to save some money that could be our infinitive phrase bigger than just the infinitive okay yep that's fine so we have an infinitive we have a prepositional okay. phrase, we have a prepositional phrase, but look at how we had marked it as a complete direct object here. All of this. So what can we do down here? Consider all of it as part of the direct object. 
the infinitive phrase. An infinitive phrase, and within the infinitive phrase is two prepositional phrases. Because it does make sense to say I want what? To go to Italy with my son. All of it feels like the answer to that question, doesn't it? Yep. So we can have two prepositional phrases within a big infinitive phrase. Okay? All right. We're down to the last row. We're looking for structure. We're looking for sentence type. Mm -hmm. And tell me where to stop. Oh, I want to, to go to Italy with my son. Boom. So right here. We know to stop here because there's this comma. That's that comma. And this is our dependent clause. Which means our independent clause is what, SB? I'll have to save some money. That's right. Money. And that's our independent. So, who's going to flip it for me? Owen, read the sentence with the independent clause first and the dependent clause second. I'll have to save some money if I want to go to Italy with my son. Oh, it makes sense. That sounds like that. You can read it both ways. Now, if we did it the way Owen just read it, we would have no comma in the sentence. When the independent clause comes first, no comma. It's only when the dependent clause comes first. So we start to get really familiar recognizing these subordinate conjunctions, then it's going to be real easy to realize we've got a complex sentence here. Yeah. So is that why there's the complex and an ID and the complex D comma I? Exactly why. Yep. So that you're learning the punctuation right away while you're learning the structure. Yep. What's the C C 